Okay, doing some portraits of Sonia here in the studio. I'm using the Aperture 120D with the light dome and a reflector, as you can see. So I'm gonna start with the X-T2 at f2.8, 1600 ISO and a shutter speed of 250 of a second. That should give us a pretty sharp portrait at that. I can handhold pretty well at 250 of a second. So now I'm just going to drop my ISO back to 800 and shutter speed to 125th. Now ISO back to 400 and shutter speed to a 60th. And I'm using uh, a very small single point AF on Sonia's eye. So I'm trying to make sure I get the exact focus point. Okay, so now dropping back to 200th of a second and opening up to a 30th. And now 100 ISO and a 15th of a second. All right, now I'm gonna repeat the whole process on the X-H1 with the 56 mil. So now we will see how it goes with the inbuilt image stabilization. Okay, good to go with the X-H1 now, 1600 ISO again, still at f2.8 and 250th of a second to start with. Okay, so dropping back now to 800 ISO and 125th of a second. Four hundred ISO sixtieth of a second. Two hundred ISO and a thirtieth of a second. Now 100 ISO and a 15th of a second. When shooting these images, I obviously took more than one shot at each shutter speed. Some were sharper than others, so when making the selections, I tried to pick an average shot in terms of its sharpness. Meaning that at the slower shutter speeds, it is possible to get a fairly sharp image if you take enough of them. They were just processed through Lightroom Classic CC with minimal adjustments and cropping. Okay, so let's have a closer look at these shots and do a side-by-side -side comparison. Firstly, with the 250th of a second shots, you can see there is no real difference as I'm able to handhold the XC2 and get very sharp images without any problems. Next, at 125th of a second, you can see a very small reduction in sharpness in the XT2 compared to the X-H1. At a 60th of a second, the difference in sharpness gets even more noticeable, especially when looking at the fine details in the eyelashes and hair. At a 30th, the X-T2 image is pretty much unusable, with very definite signs of camera movement, while the X-H1 is still pin sharp. Finally, at a 15th, there is a massive difference in the sharpness. The X-T2 image is a blurry mess, but the X-H1, while not quite as sharp as the previous image at 1 60th, is still quite sharp and definitely usable. So there you have a quick example of the same subject shot with and without IBIS. I can definitely see this being a big benefit to my style of work, especially when shooting in low light conditions when I want to keep the ISO pretty low. 
Let me know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked the video, thumbs down if you didn't, and please subscribe to see more XH1 videos coming out pretty soon. Until I see you in the next video, ciao for now.